Welcome back to WTOP's Beer of the Week. We are joined, as always, by Greg Engert, Beer Director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group of Food and Wine Sommelier of the Year. The group includes Columbia Firehouse and Vermilion, both in beautiful Old Town. Greg, it is always good to see you. Good to see you, too. What's on tap? Oh. Oh, it's that time week. of year again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have good old 120-minute uh, IPA, uh, the Imperial India Pale Ale from um, Dogfish Head. Uh, this is a, uh, a cult classic of sorts. Uh, they've been brewing it in uh, Delaware, uh, Dewey, and then Milton since 2003. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's rare if you see it, you grab it split it with somebody as we are because it's pretty potent it's it's been consistently clocking in at about 18 percent alcohol although over the Mother. span it's gone as high as as low as 15 and as high as 20. so um 18 percent alcohol continually hopped for two straight hours um so 120 minutes versus the 60 and 90. Uh, so there's dumping hops in the whole time during the boil the whole time the whole time the whole time uh it is then uh during ferment uh during fermentation it's going to be uh, dry hop daily for about a month, um, wow. and then uh, it's going to be moved for another month on a ton of whole cone hops. So it's receiving almost two months of dry hopping in addition to that uh, two hours of straight intense hopping, um, and it's uh, it's, a it's one of a kind to be tried. Yeah. Oh, herbaceous. It's uh, big. Clear the calendar. It's funny, I was looking, you know, on the on the Dogfish Head website, it even says like they were they're really cool. They've done a lot of interesting stuff. Like they were one of the first websites, as far as I know, that would, that put food pairings on the website per beer. But also something I've always been intrigued by um, is that they always did wine equivalents to their beers, which I think the reason in some ways, no offense to Sam, who's a friend of mine, in some ways why that hasn't taken off in other places is that it's, it's pretty tough to make a wine equivalent to every beer. Um, but even in this one, it says more whiskey than wine. Right, um, Because, exactly. you know, this is, this is almost spirituous. You know, it's like a, it's got some boldness to it. It you know, is a sipper. fun, fun ride. Delicious up front yeah. and delicious in the end, but you really taste, to me, taste the booze at the end. You do? Oh, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's there. it's fun. That's but a it's fun. hot. Yeah, yeah. It's supposed to be there. Because the thing is, like, a lot of the mouthfeel is coming from some of the residual sugars and starches, but also from the booze. Booze, as you know, like you sip, like, whiskey, has a viscous quality to it. And what I think here, you know, I remember in the old days when we would serve this, God, I can tell you, like, at the Brick Skeller in D.C., you know, classic beer bar. And I used to work there, geez, over a decade ago now. Um, we, uh... It was, Brickscale was one of the first places to serve dogfish head beer outside of the brew pub in Rehoboth. Sam used to come down for events all the time. I remember he would come down with 750 milliliter bottles of beer, and the labels would be attached with a rubber band. Um, but we would have 120, and I remember early on some you know, beer experts would, would be like, this isn't an IPA and blah, blah, blah. It's not hoppy enough, not bitter enough, um, which maybe that's true, maybe it's not. Maybe it's more of a barley wine, what have you. But the cool thing about this is that it has hop flavor. Um, you can taste hops throughout the beer. They're well interwoven with that booze, that body, the malt character. And then there's even some kind of um, spicy fruit notes in the nose, I think, from, from the fermentation as well. Wow. Uh, a friend of mine was over at a friend's last month, and uh, he had a couple of old Brick Skeller menus out. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it made me very nostalgic. And looking through, it was always... Ooh, that one. Oh, no, sorry, we're out of that. Yeah, that I mean, it didn't happen all the time, but when you have a selection that vast, as they did, uh, it's going to happen. Now, on the, on this, it says, ages well, which is nice oh, that yeah, they tell you that. And I, I go into liquor stores in D.C., and I see it up on a high shelf, and that's good, as long as they're not putting it in the sun in the front display case, right? right. I mean, as long... High shelf, it shouldn't probably be on either, just because heat rises. It will be warmer oh, okay. up there. Well, um, good to know. But... Um, what I think is interesting about this is that we always say, IPA, don't age an IPA, don't age an IPA. Well, when they start to get 18% alcohol and they've got a lot of booze and richness on the palate, then you can think about it. Because a beer like this, it's like almost like an American barley wine. We aged Bigfoot from Sierra Nevada, which is coming out uh, right about now, too. Because, yes, it's going to lose some of that hop character, but it's also going to mellow some of that booze. Some of the malt character is going to come out. So this ages 
beautifully, like a, um, like a barley wine would. It'd become like toasty, even more toasty, sherry, sherry like raisiny, um, white port, you name it. The hop character will subside, but the beer will almost become more round and mellowed um, over the years. I mean, does that color not make you want to try it at least? Oh, it's yeah, an inviting, beautiful um, color of beer. Isn't it? So, what challenges, if any, does this pose when you're pairing it with food? Uh, well, I should say it's or funny. What would you pair it with? I mean, uh, we. We always try to pair everything with food because I think some things do work. I do have to say, you need to honestly, eat something when you're drinking this. Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> Maybe not a pairing, but like something. Yeah, like you're, you're having some, something to soak it up. But that said, you know, I have trouble. You see a lot of whiskey pairing dinners now and cocktail pairing dinners. Sometimes it's tough for me because I just think that when well, cocktails cases, sometimes they're often too cold, um, which can be overwhelm the palate. But also, booze. Booze is a big flavor and it's tough. To, to, to deal with. I mean, you need the biggest stuff to really take care of it. So, I mean, again, I, I prefer this on its own. Maybe, you know, if you're eating on the side, that's great, of course, um, to have, uh, you know, some um, substance there to soak it up. But with pairing, it can be tough. That said, you know, you can see you doing it like with uh, big, huge uh, lamb, game, uh, you, you know, suckling pig could work really well. Uh, something that's got some, some funk and richness to it. Um, and then you could do it with a, a whole, all manner of like cream desserts, I think would be great. Carrot cake, anything with ginger spice to it. Gingerbread cookies might be fun. Um, but basically you need something to kind of, to, to handle the, the intensity. Or have, have a little before dinner. Some yeah, wine with yeah, dinner, no, and then have a little and after And come back dinner. to it afterwards. The other thing about this is make sure that it's nice and not warm, but definitely cellar tap. I, I like this beer, uh, you know, we had this out for about an hour now. I, I like this around 55 degrees. I think it's, um, it's, uh, it is great with that. And actually, now that I just thought about it too, this ha to me, this has a kind of apricot-y, uh, pineapple-y flavor to it. So you could, you could maybe get away with, uh, to your point of like eating something on the side. I, I don't know, maybe you could do it with like a, a greasy um, Hawaiian pizza. But kind of fun with that, that ham good. salt, stuff like that. Try it out. Let us know at Beer of the Week at WTOP.com. Uh, yeah, dynamite stuff. Greg, thank you as always. Thank you. Everyone, please, especially with this, always do drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another Beer of the Week.